The St. Mark's Tower is one of Frank Lloyd Wright's earliest designs for a skyscraper. This was planned to go around St. Mark's Church in downtown Manhattan, and had it been built, it would have been the first glass skyscraper in New York City. The model came to us in very, very poor condition. It was missing about 50% of its exterior. It was covered with soot and grime. It was up to us to bring it to um, a stable enough con condition to be studied and exhibited. But I began by vacuuming first to remove the bulk of the grime and dust. And then I went over all the surfaces with a very slightly dampened sponge cut into small shapes so I could get into the interior parts of the model. The first thing I noticed when you look past the damage is how intricate the object is. It has a lot of detail, both on the interior floorboards and the exterior walls. There are little stenciled drawings and incised designs. He just left the window panes totally empty with the occasional pane open, tilted open and painted blue to reflect the sky. The landscaping is also very carefully executed. They took little pieces of paperboard and wood and glued them to the balconies so they look like plants cascading over the balconies. I learned by looking at correspondence in the archive why St. Mark's Tower was never built. Part of the reason was because Wright's client was worried that it was too avant-garde for its time. He wrote that he was afraid that tenants in the building would be struck with vertigo on the upper floors, having nothing between them and the city streets but a thin pane of glass. When the building wasn't built, Wright went on to reuse or recycle the model, showing it in his exhibitions he curated about his designs. And these exhibitions would tour the country and sometimes the world. The extensive exhibition and travel that this model underwent really took its toll. So it's not surprising that we see early touch-ups and restorations carried out by Wright and his students. Once we got to the point where the model was stabilized and clean, we came to the question of whether to restore it and if we restore it, how far to take it. This was a conversation we had with the curators at MoMA. We discussed everything from leaving it just as it was in this ruined state. We also discussed restoring it fully, but that felt a little bit heavy-handed. The decision to leave one corner of the model unrestored felt to us like it struck the right balance between respecting the object's history, but also respecting Wright's original vision. For the restoration, a lot of it was just cutting acid-free paperboard to the right shapes, painting them, and gluing them in place. Then I was also able to take advantage of new techniques to replicate these exterior stencil designs by printing them on Japanese paper made of mulberry fibers, which go transparent when you add adhesive to them. With this tiny furniture that came along with the model. We don't have photographs of how it was originally arranged, but we do have drawings where Wright stipulates how you should arrange his Wright-designed furniture. The primary goal of this conservation campaign was to make Wright's vision more clear to audiences today and in the future. But the restoration is also designed to be revisited, reversed if desired by future generations who may have a different interpretation of this model. <laughs>